Hi folks, it's Andrew here again, uh, making another YouTube video. Deckmaster is not here this time, but uh, decided to do this one solo. So as you see here, it's getting night time. I'm going to go, and go to sleep. Anyways, um, for this episode, I'm going to teach you how to make a mob trap. Whoa, 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 whoa. Huh. Alright, I was doing something earlier with Geckmaster and switched my difficulty, but for the purposes of this video, I will be playing on Peaceful. That scared me. Anyways, going to bed. Um, so yes, I'm going to help teach you how to make a mob trap to make sure those skeletons don't do what that skeleton just did to me. So, anyways, I've already made some preparations. I cleared out a field there and uh, made myself an infinite spring because we're going to need a lot of water. So, the dimensions of this thing will be 12 by 10. You can dig it either 3 or 4 spaces down. I made this little canyon here 14, so you can see where I kind of dug over, or, uh, yeah, where I got rid of stuff that was over this, so Let's see, I'll start here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Alright, so pretty much what this will do, the mob trap, it will... It has a lot of currents of water. And, uh... The currents will... Pull the mobs under. And drown them. And when they drown all the stuff will be pushed down under a glass box. Now you have to stand in the glass box. The only way it works is the mobs are attracted to you. Um, and the glass box will also protect you from creepers and uh, and skeleton arrows. So Now if you get put in the mob trap, it's fine because you have a better ability to fight the currents than uh, than the mobs do so you're safe um, yeah I'm not picking up any of these blocks I already picked up a bunch inside I need shovels so alright anyways so that's the first level now uh, I might skip through some of this just to uh, Make it go by faster, might speed some of it up. Um, it's actually my first time speeding something up. Um, Alright, and usually how you get in the mob trap, obviously if there's two or, two or three spots of water um, between you and your base, you won't be able to jump onto it because the point is that you don't want anything to be able to jump on it so you pretty much have to just make a few blocks in order to make a kind of like a bridge and then walk over and break your bridge behind you and as long as you do it um, before nightfall uh, you should be safe Whoa. Oh, I mean I guess you have to dig down a little anyways um, yeah so I've made a few of these uh, there's a few different types I basically stick to the one that I know and the one that works for me and um, pretty much the one I do um, is just the glass box there's some people who actually have converted the bottom story of their houses into a mob trap you know just like a person would surround a castle with a moat they would surround their house with a moat and anything that got trapped in it would get sucked down and all their items would go to a basement or first floor. So, uh, well, I don't think I'm going to go down the, the fourth floor because that, I don't like blocks. Alright, so uh, pretty much all you need for this is um, lots of shovels. You need lots of glass. You know, I got four stacks of 64. I'm not even sure if that will be enough because I have to build the structure. And, um, you need a bucket and water. So, all 
Alright. And so, um, if you guys ever have any uh, requests that seem simple enough, I'm not some big person who can do elaborate like Rubik's cubes out of pistons. In fact, I don't even think I've messed around with pistons that much yet. Um, let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and start filling this thing in with water, just to show you how the uh, no, just to show you how the uh, currents work, so you can get a little broader idea. Um, Pretty much, you just need to add one of these to every little section. And see, if I go over here and start counteracting it, every movement I do on the other side, it'll start pushing everything to the middle. Which is pretty much what you want to do. And you might think, well, hey, this could work what I'm doing right here. It really wouldn't because the whole purpose is to have it kill the mobs and then push it push all the items to you. So see all the things are crowded there in the middle. And alright, um the mobs can jump in water. Sometimes they will and when they do that it will um they'll stay afloat. So you don't wanna have the bottom of your glass box um, level with the water because it'll let spiders in, it'll let um, it'll let arrows in and nothing good will happen. See, and eventually you get a nice nice little thing there. Might lag somebody's game out, I'm not sure. But um, you can have holes in the top of the glass box. Uh, I do that sometimes, a little stairway up there, it's just so you can get out. And you can use the water to jump out. Uh, so, uh, and I will most likely speed through most of this. Um, I won't speed up the audio that much, but I uh, have to compress it a little bit. Yeah, so. <sighs> yeah, I've, uh,. I posted part one and two of our uh, Mine and Geck Masters adventures. Um, we have another adventure. It was kind of a kind of a fail. I'm gonna wait to post those just to see if I really want to because we kind of cheated, not knowing it until halfway through. Um, turned out uh, Geck Master had an event of his own and turned enemies off. So when we did our adventure there were no creatures which was a pretty big part of it but there were a lot of very interesting puzzles we did uh, it's called the uh, pharaoh's curse the pharaoh's curse was very worth it if you ever see it huh, i wonder why that one space isn't maybe i missed it let's see here there we go all right um yeah, and I've been trying to post part three of our first adventure, but it my computer keeps doing something and it says it can't find the file, so I will work on that to find all the files. I don't know. I kept telling the computer to save it somewhere, it kept telling me to save it somewhere else. So I probably have to just go to where the computer told me to find it, and if I don't find it, I will sad face and post a video apologizing. So, um, so I got that side done. The I'm trying to think. Whoa, I need the bucket. Um, these things usually don't take too long to make. Um, the one I'm showing you is kind of big, and it also. It also, what should we call it? I'm sorry, I keep losing my track of thought. I can't concentrate and talk. Um, uh, it can also act as a um, as a base. I usually put a bed in mine. Um, 
and you can't place torches on glass, but usually you want a piece of dirt or two so that you can attach a ladder to it. Because sometimes when you fall in the reservoir that drops all the items to you, you get stuck down there. Because you have to jump a whole block out of water, and you usually can't do that. So I put a ladder just to be safe. And here's nighttime. Um, I brought some torches in case of that. And I will also go grab my backup torches if I need to. And see how this works out. Now, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and grab the backup torches because my computer does not look so good when it's nighttime. So. Now I'm going to change my rendering distance too because if it's night time I won't be able to see out that far anyways. So I'm going to keep that lit up and keep these areas lit up. Alright, and uh, when this video is done I will either post a second video or depending on how much time this video takes up, put it at the end of this and show you how it works. Because literally all you really have to do is just stand in one spot and wave high to the mobs as they drown. Now, a lot of my friends, I told, uh, I posted on Facebook one time, mob trap success. And they asked, what's a mob trap? And I told them, and they said, that is really dark. So I said, oh, well, okay. Whatever, but I was really happy. It was an accomplishment for me. That chicken might just be my first test subject. You never know. Yeah, and these these things don't have to be too elaborate. I mean, you just need enough space to be able to go down, grab the things, and enough space to have the water fall and drown people. So I mean, if you could get a creeper to step in a hole full of water and then just tap the top of it that would work but it takes some timing and you have to be where the creepers are <laughs> yeah me and uh we, we when we did the pharaoh's curse the first time because if you watch the video i kind of mentioned that we had tried once before and we actually did and failed miserably a creeper blew up a part of a pyramid that had a lot of tnt in it and after that, me and my friend, Geckmaster, uh, decided we didn't like creepers anymore. But it's not really up to us, because the creepers apparently seem to love us. They come to us, and they explode with love. And that was a fail. Alright, oh, and hey, we got a sheep friend in here, too. Yeah, my friend, uh, Chris, he's Agnar, if you look at my channel, um hates it when he leaves his door open because no matter where he is he always seems to have an animal or two come in and they have a party without him and you know, Chris isn't really much of a party animal if uh, you excuse a pun um, but he doesn't like it when parties are thrown in his house and he's not invited so So this is looking out, looking quite nice here. Um, sometimes people add like an outer lip on the outside, just like added blocks up here. Uh, so once that the people get in, it's a lot harder for them to get out. But uh, I don't think getting out is a problem if they're all attracted to you. Um, the only problems this could really pose is if. You, your, your zombies or your skeletons or your creepers manage to stay afloat for a long time. It happens sometimes, but um, and like especially with skeletons and zombies, um, when they're in water, they don't light on fire in the sunlight. So whatever comes to your window knocking at night could have the possibility of staying there. But anyways, we got the. Um, We've got the water all done. You see it floats perfectly to the center. 